So today we'll go over um, kind of keeping track of our data after an experiment. All right, and what we'll do in the lab. I'm going to zoom in. So we have these run sheets that are, it's probably best to go um, to our run sheets and then open it up and copy it for the next experiment. All right. Now the, I have two that are complete, um, so you wouldn't have all this data at the beginning, but you want to put the date year, month, day, what kind of wafers. We had 23 P-type, uh, 11100 oriented, 1 to 10 ohms per square. Uh, it was Evelyn and myself. Uh, for the prep, in this case, we just took the wafers right out of the box and loaded them. Which tube did we use? The bottom. Right now, it's the only one that's working. And then we have our recipe. Now, what these numbers, like we might have a nominal temperature of 900, but what we set the controllers to is different. And that calibration data can be found here. So that if you want different, you want to make sure we go to the bottom tube, 2023. That's the most recent point. And you can see there's some calibration data. All right, so if I want to go to 1100, I set it to these values, All right? And you can see it's very linear. So in fact, um, you could safely choose any temperature in between and just do a linear interpolation to get the values you want. So anyway, uh, this is the recipe. We push in, in this case, one inch every 15 seconds, and we're, the tube is set at 900, right? And yeah, this is our crazy ambient humidity growth process, and there's 45% uh, humidity, that's it. Then we let it stabilize for five. Then we ramp up to 1100. Now, uh, I forget the ramp time. You're supposed to go back and enter it in later because it's not as, uh, I don't have a computer control program to set the ramp time exactly. I have to go back and measure it. It'll be consistent, but at this point, I forget how fast it ramps, right? Then we let it stabilize again. We soak, which means uh, for 30, thirty minutes, and I believe that is incorrect. I believe that was for 60. I'll have to go back and check it because it was this that was for 30, and I was making up run sheets. So that'll be in the logbook, right? And 30 wouldn't be long enough for basically the data. Now, yeah, um, on another day, I do seem to recall that it took about 40 to go down, and uh, I don't want to put a number in there, right? Stabilize, and then we pull out, all right? Uh, pull it out of the tube. And, you know, how to do all that would be a different video. So that's the recipe, which if we were doing diffusion, we would be running different gases if we were doing Dry ox, we would be using, uh, we would be turning on oxide, uh, oxygen at certain points. And if we're doing wet ox, we're turning on certain things on at certain points. So then here's the data, right? And you should, after you've measured everything, right? It's in an Excel, it's a common, uh, excuse me. It's a Google Doc, right? And what, you do is you upload it to the directory, all right? And here's a particular example, right? And so this is what comes from the fill metrics where it has the mean and standard deviation and goodness of fit. But our analysis tool will choke with that. So what I do is I create a new sheet, label it the same thing, and I, or almost the same thing. And now these will be the, the headers for Python pandas. And then this I share by publishing to the web. Uh, it should be comma separated. Um, and we've already done that. Uh, should be already separated. 
because it was working. All right. And there's the link that you'll you'll get. And so for um, we will put that link here. Now then that link goes into a Python file. And so you put that URL right here, you read it into pandas, and this does the analysis, right? And this happens to be the second one we did. And it gives you the plot of average oxide thickness versus wafer number, and the green line is the model, right? And this is by position. Position one is the top, blue is the center, Three is the bottom of the wafer, that's orange. No, three is green, that's the bottom. Left is orange, right is yellow. And the average of all of those points per wafer is the gray, and you can see that in there, right? And then this would be the average plotted out, and that's what the um, we do the linear regression on which in this case is 0.247, all right, which uh, is not that strong. But we actually don't want a linear relationship along our, we'd like to be a tight and random along, a, we don't really want a slope. But the, sl the offset is 2,362 angstroms. And there's a slope of minus seven angstroms per wafer number, right? As we, but you can see that things are still jumping around. Uh, they're significant because they're less than 5%. Although if you were using the 10%, I mean the 1% criteria for significance, uh, this wouldn't meet it. And you'll see that the, the other descriptors. Now, oh, yeah, I'll just, cut and paste that, you know, after everything is measured. Sorry, but I've got a lot of screens open. All right, I'll cut and paste all this. Um, it might not come out uh, exactly the way you want. So you have to, um, a lot of times it's best just to highlight all of this. Set it to a size of 11, and then format line spacing. So you want sig single, and you want to turn off adding a space before and turn off adding a space after. It's still not nicely lined up. All right. This particular run was the first run we did and r squared is higher so it is you know more uh, stronger relationship its significance is not measurable it's not really zero it's just less than five percent and then here's our plots all right and something happened that I think uh, made the first wafers into the furnace a lot higher than the rest um, which give the reason there. Right. And then how do I get those plots in? If your spider Python is set up nicely, right, it plots to the, like when it runs, you might see this or this or anything. You have to click on plots and then you just click here, copy, and just cut and paste it. All right. And so, Once I got everything working, all right, you upload the Python file. Here, all right, um, making sure to use a different name, right? Otherwise, um, Actually, I should probably
turn everybody to viewer and make sure that your files are all viewer, right? So that nobody else can go back and, and change it, okay? So you can read it, but you can't accidentally change it. And then you just copy the link. Oh, link copied, right? And then you would paste it into your Python file. Right? So that way, if anything should happen, right, you can re-get that plot. Or let's say we need to adjust these the figures. We need to add a title, right? We don't have to hunt for the data, enter it by hand. Um, and the thing is, is that file, right, is linked directly to your the spreadsheet you did. So now that we've done that, um, so this we did, uh, we, we grew some oxide from a previous run. I didn't have the etching set up, so we just grew it again for training, right? So this is, we started with bare silicon here, right? And we got this results by wafer, right? We got uh, we got an average of 1,056 angstroms with a standard deviation of 55, and this is the index of refraction, which we weren't really looking at. Right? And you can see how everything looks. Right? Then we so I'm saying we grew the first one, now we're growing the second one. And we only grew it for 30 minutes because it was training. The R squared went down, right? It's it's either significant or not. You don't say it's more or less. Either it tripped your threshold or not. And we're calling that significant, right? Although it looks very random, almost no relationship, right? And let's see. So the mean was thicker because we did 30 minutes. Actually, we grew it for a lot longer than that due to the ramping and ambient, right? And the standard deviation was, you know, almost 200, right? And so there was something weird that happened, and it could have been the use of the new bolt. You guys should put pictures in there. So now we've got two you know, fully documented experiments that, you know, we can replicate and that we can trust the data. And now every time we do an oxide, yeah, you will measure it uh, with the film metrics according to the standard operating procedure, upload it, um, export it, run the Python file on it, insert the results here and put the links for the data and link to the Python um, and then any notes. And so then we would be able to go back and uh, write our poster, right? But the thing is, is now this will never, I mean, we could do a repeatability study, right? But um, there, it really makes it so that we don't have to repeat ourselves. All right, so that's great.